Hello Rat Bags, it's Jade with another Cube World video. It's only a few days ago I highlighted that this game, almost forgotten about for over six years, is actually maybe possibly gonna be coming out very soon. Little did I know I'd be making a video so soon, giving you a release window and the platform. It is coming to Steam. I'm gonna go through all the details. If you don't know what Cube World is, go and check out the previous video. The link for it's gonna be in the description box down below. Don't forget to like if you love open world survival games, RPGs. I always give you the brand new news about these games coming out and if they'll ever come out on console. Let's crack on with the biggest news ever for Cube World fans. Cube World is on Steam. This is huge. If you did miss the first video, a brief recap if you're wondering why I'm getting so hyped and excited about a game that looks a little bit like a crossover between Trove and Minecraft. Well, if you're not going to go and watch that previous video, basically Cube World was developed it hit a big trending patch just alongside or just after minecraft came out lots of content creators were looking for something different and cube world seemed to offer that procedurally generated lands story quests you can choose your character your class and although it looks cutesy and colorful it's got much more deeper hard combat underneath it all it was in an alpha that you had to go to another website to buy and the developer was teasing all sorts of content coming once he actually got it going Unfortunately though, that was all a bit of a dream. He didn't actually update the game other than some bug fixes and pretty much over the next four to five years only released some information like once a year. At one point he went nearly 18 months without updating anything including what was going on with the game and in all that time the game never received any update and he actually took it off sale from the website that he was using pretty much soon after it launched. There's been many theories and no one really knows why but we can only assume that maybe the pressure got to him. So that's pretty much what the last video is talking about. And if you don't believe why this game is so hype, just look it up on YouTube, type in the Cube World mystery or what happened to Cube World and see how many views it's got and see how many tweets this tweet by the creator is getting and retweets. This is huge. So Cube World has got a window, it's got a Steam page, no longer going to be an alpha. It's looking like it's going to be a full game. This is crazy. This game has not had any content updates for, what, six, seven years nearly? Yet the content creator has been going and showing stuff off in the last couple of months on YouTube, and that obviously is ramping up even more. This is gonna be the biggest game going in a little while. Trust me when I say it has got such a following still, even years after it first came out. If you're someone that looked at things like Minecraft and thought they're pretty cool, but you don't really want to get into it because of all the crafting and survival aspects, then Cube World is definitely something a bit more RPG fantasy focused. You'll be running around taking care of mobs, finding rare resources to craft potions, and hopefully upgrade your character and get new skills. It's all about exploration. There's lots of quests that are procedurally generated. And back in the day, this was a pretty new thing. Minecraft did have procedurally generated worlds, of course. Terraria also followed suit, but it wasn't as commonplace as it is now. Back seven years ago, this was still a big thing. And this is partly why Q World was so popular. It was just something, a breath of fresh air. It still reminded people of good old fashioned games like Zelda, the RPG games like that. And because it was voxel based, i.e. looking a little bit like Minecraft, it literally was like the biggest trending thing happening for a few brief months. So there's no official release date as of yet as pinpointed. But as the tweet says, he's looking to release it September, October. That's literally only a couple of weeks away. The end of September, October 2019. And best of all, anyone that actually paid money for the alpha, where well, you couldn't even buy the game after a little while because he shut down the website, they're going to get free Steam keys. That is fantastic news. This game went on to be literally copied and pirated so much because people were desperate to play it. There's a whole industry built around the mystery of Cube World, Cube World content. There are YouTubers that have been literally making Cube World content for seven years based off its first iteration. Now at first glance, it doesn't look like too much has changed. They've got new footage of, well, I say new footage, there's four classes. And the last video was shown off Mage gameplay and a bunch of changes to the uh, 3D map. We've had some great games come out since then. Portal Knights, Dragon Quest Builders, all combining how you can quest and also building or this style where you go on and take on lots of mobs. We've also had some really rough ones like Pixar, 
and by all accounts from you guys telling me in the comment section, Trove really wasn't that great. So I'm pretty excited. I am a grown man getting hyped over a colorful pixelated game. It's because it does call out to that child that used to maybe play Link, that loves RPGs and fantasy games, and also, yes, does love Minecraft. So let's go through the blurb right now. There's gonna be four classes, Warrior, Ranger, Mage, and Rogue. You're gonna be able to dodge, you're gonna be able to use combos, and you're gonna have special skills and more. A completely, nearly infinite procedure generated world. Craft weapons, armor, potions, food, elixirs, all through ingredients that you find for art. And you'll also have pets that will fight alongside you and can be taken and used as mounts. Non-linear open world gameplay, solve quests, help residents, fight huge monsters, explore ancient dungeons, it's all up to you. The new magic artifacts are looking likely as part of the new stuff that's in there. Retrieve unique magic artifacts to level up and improve your skills. Earn gold to buy items or to book an eagle flight to new lands. Use hand gliders, magic items, and you can play solo, single player, or join your friends in co-op online multiplayer. Now this is probably the big thing. I do believe they were looking into it. A lot of people actually made proper servers. I remember the Yogscast having one up and there was a bunch of them on there. Now obviously time to change a little bit. It doesn't look like it's gonna be a full multiplayer experience. We're maybe not necessarily gonna be servers where you can have like 32 or 50 players all running around. I'm not gonna lie, that's a bit of a shame. But even at least it's got the co-op mode, so that's great. No idea how many players can actually join you though. I'm presuming it's gonna be around four to six. Now it's not all rosy, for sure there's a bunch of comments. Look how many have appeared already. This news only broke a couple of hours ago. This one is saying that Steam Keys will definitely be getting made for people that bought the alpha. Obviously not the people that bought crack versions. Of course, you are gonna to have to check your old email. So if you go to the website that you originally bought it from and find your login details, which is a bit crazy. I'm starting to think maybe I even bought a copy of this to run on my laptop, but I quickly discovered my laptop couldn't handle it. I may have to have a fiddle around and see if it remembers me. So the community, the people that have been waiting for this game forever and people that have just sort of grown up watching content on it, for sure the hype is there, but there is definitely some criticism still about this game. And I think it's right that we highlight some of that too. This one's a bit extra salty though, saying that this game is vapeware. Obviously the game isn't vapeware. Vapeware is pretty much where you put just a placeholder, take a bunch of pre-orders and then just cancel the game. This game has been available for you to buy in the past. And for sure, it's definitely worth waiting maybe until it's fully out on sale before committing, checking out gameplay, seeing how it is. There's some big questions to be asked. Has it moved on? Has it got enough to sustain the people that are around playing these type of games anymore? Also, adults have got used to playing all sorts of procedurally generated games too. And on the brief window, I've got to say, it still looks a little bit light. When you've got games like I mentioned earlier, like Portal Knights offering lots of boss fights, also lots of ways to craft and gather and build, and then Dragon Quest coming out with two sequels, not to mention all the updates Minecraft has still received in that time. From the outside looking in when I never really played the alpha, I've got to say not much looks to have changed. There's a cool brand new 3D looking map, although some people don't like the way it zooms in. And there's much more emphasis on choosing your own path and choosing your own story by completing quests rather than doing a set certain amount in a certain order. So yeah, absolutely have a bit of skepticism if you're one of them people that have been waiting and waiting. And for sure the developer, regardless of if he did it on his own, I think it has never hurt to keep people informed and that is definitely something he's been pretty bad at. How that's gonna relate if he does release it on Steam and then maybe it's broke or it's buggy and are they gonna fix it? Is there gonna be problems and issues that they're gonna carry on developing it? That's definitely something to be a little bit skeptical of. As I mentioned, the alpha received only two bug fix updates and lots of promised content never materialized. Right now, the game isn't listed as early access, although that could change near the time. It's saying it is a full game. So for sure, if you're someone that really feels like they get burnt a lot with early access games, or games where they're just not updated frequently enough, maybe take a look at this for a few weeks first. But I am gonna be making a day one purchase of this after I've checked my email to see if I actually have an account. I love the idea of exploring a procedure generated world with mobs and bosses like this. It's looking pretty sweet. Yes, yeah, some people may not be able to get over the fact it's so pixelated or so blocky, but honestly, it's colorful, it's cute. I think this is really a cool looking game. 
Let me know what you think about this news. How hyped are you? Are you going to be digging around for that email for your account? What character class are you going to be going for first? And how do you feel about it now just being co-op rather than maybe like multiplayer session based? Absolutely no word about console release yet. Let's just see how it goes with Steam release and maybe we'll see a console version maybe next year, possibly after a good while. This game would go skyrocketing if it did appear on a console, particularly something like the Switch. Right now on Steam it does say it's only partially supported for controllers, so obviously got a lot of work to go still. I really hope it does work on controllers and not just mouse and keyboard. And the UI looks really tiny with the writing and stuff, so hopefully that can be changed and adjusted. I am JPG, I give you news about indie games, survival, open world and RPGs. Make sure you've got a notification bell on to see even more news about Q World and for sure check out my gameplay once the game is actually released. Until then, rat bags, laters.